Welcome back to the channel. So, uh, unfortunately, I seem to have mislaid the piece of video that shows how to paint this, or how I painted it rather, but it was very simple. I sprayed the gun in XF65, and the uh, the tractor, the Stalinets, was just sprayed up in a, I think, probably the similar colour, or olive drab, and then I've just gone over it with 4BO from MRP. So nothing special at this moment. I do later, during the build, again, which I didn't film, put a camouflage on the front of the gun, which I started to notice in all the um, uh, reference that I was looking at. So I thought, well, we'll just whack something on. And that was simple MRP, uh, German, des you know, tank colours, simple stuff. So uh, here I'm just putting a bit of metallized effect on the uh, sort of steel edges of the wheels which uh, would be quite well highly polished or dull metal and then we're back to the tracks so as we did in the last video using the dust and rust set still um, I'm just trying to get a sort of handle on it all um, so continually using it and this is one set of tracks that I've done and the other set is just the basic like initial stage so uh, that's this is the process that I uh, use for this it's again it's not to make the tracks rusty it just gives us a base color to work on and just go through the process here so it's uh, very straightforward so I'll leave you with this for the moment and then we'll have a bit of a focus on weathering the actual tractor
And once we're happy with the tracks uh, and we've put them on the model, which they just clip around, no problem, we saw that in the build. Time to start with the initial washing. So starting off here, I mean, call it what you want, a panel line wash, uh, a way of getting the enamel product on there. Um, I'm just kind of whacking it on where I want it to be. And then I use thinners to control it and move it around. And then we manipulate it into doing what we want it, you know, want it to do. And we just work around. So this is just an initial wash just to give, uh, well, start the layers of dirtiness building up, trying to catch some of the features. So we've got the Russian, uh, I, I imagine it's a maker's name down the side there of the radiator. And just working in general ways to kind of pick up some rain streaks and that sort of thing. I'm just going all over with this initial wash. And then once we're happy with that, we start to build up the layers again with, with different washes. So here now I'm using uh, Streaking Rust, Dark Wash and Starship Wash, as well as a few others. <laughs> Track Wash, Dark Streaking Grime. I mean, they're all just, it, this is instead of putting five or six different colours of oils on a piece of card. This is just my way of doing it where it's a little bit faster. These are all the ones that I've chosen to use. Uh, they're five pounds a pot, so... You know, you've got to take your, you, you, you've got to make your decision with what you want to do. You could buy a pot, a, 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 a um, I don't know what you'd call it, a tube of oil paint. And it would be similar price and probably last you a lifetime. Uh, but I prefer the way these are sort of set up and how we can just use them straight out of the pot, and that's what we're doing here. So you can see behind where I'm putting these uh, wet, neat uh, enamel washes on at the minute, that behind there, there's a bit of patina built up, and that was the previous step, just going on there and just working it into areas uh, broadly, and now you can see we're going on picking different colours and being more specific in areas. And that starts to build up, uh, again, that layering effect, it, it builds the depth, And we can see here over the other side where I've already done quite a bit of this and it's dried off. Uh, off camera, I'm using a hairdryer. Brilliant piece of kit for uh, the model room. You'd be surprised how much you'd use it if you didn't have one in there. And that's just blasting these enamel washes once they've been put on and it just helps them dry off real, real quick. And you can keep working. And more importantly, you can see what you're doing. As in, once it dries, it looks a lot different than it does when it's wet. So you can see what effect you're, you're leaving on there. And whilst it's still workable, 
uh, because it's not totally, totally dry, you can then manipulate it still. If you leave these on for a couple of days, they become a lot harder to to um, liven up again and work. So you see, we're just picking up some points where there'd be a bit of streaking and a bit of like runs or, or a bit more depth or where some of this darker deposit would build up around these air vents and down around the cab. So it's just picking out points like that. Once we're starting to get the somewhere that we're happy with, it's time to um, you know get all the little bits. You always like to set it up, and there's me getting the um, exhaust going in, and I've slowed this down because I'd got them the wrong way round, and that went through the hole. And I'm paused here, thinking, well, I'd kept this model for an entire year, and. I'd taken it to Telford and I'd kept those two exhausts as part of it, thinking, right, well, they'll be the last thing I'll do. And that is a closed environment that I've dropped that into. <laughs> I couldn't quite believe it. But there we are. Um, the unbelievable uh, news on that is after vigorous, vigorous shaking, there was a tiny little hole in the back of the closed compartment, which it fell out of, which I didn't notice. And as I was thinking about scratch building one um it was just there on the side of my desk so it did make it in the end can't believe it took me to hell and back that exhaust anyway here we can see we've got the dust deposits on i've done the uh i've sprayed up the front as well put that sort of camo on and um we're now really starting to tie things together along with the base um i decided to really take quite a lot of time on the gun and the tractor to dial in what I was doing and then on the limber I show you what the process was to get this effect which I think is quite a nice built up dust deposit. Um, now I'm using here a couple of ammo uh, dust colours, uh, nothing special, it's just air filled dust and I think what was air filled dust and another sort of dusty colour. The colour doesn't really matter. As you can see, these are two sort of... It's a light brown and a dark brown. Any kind of colours like this, a buff colour, they all work. And you can always tie them back in with your different type of uh, dust that you're using. In this point, we're using uh, Europe Earth pigments. And um, we're getting some thinners there as well. I'm using straws there, which uh, was a great tip, I was told, a long time ago to stop getting pipettes and just get straws. A lot cheaper, a lot easier. Chuck them away, and it's not a problem. You don't seem to soak all the paint up either. 
So what we do is make this enamel wash into a really, really wet wash, which is not easy to say. And then we go all over the areas that we want this pigment to be in. And I must admit, this is a bit, it, like, like the gamers say, this is a little bit slap chop. It is just chucking it on there. Uh, now, these enamel washes do have a pigment to them. So we want to bear that in mind that when they dry, they do have a sort of pigment deposit within them that dries as well and, and stays there. But that's not what we're really using this for. Uh, once we've got an idea of where we want it to be, again, thinking about the dust... And these these are like dirt tracks in Spain. Um, they're dra dragging these through deserts. Uh, there are rains. It does rain in Spain, <laughs> sometimes in the desert. And that will make some of the dust and the sand stick. And that's what we're kind of giving an idea to. This isn't like wet mud. This is worked in, caked in dust. And all the photos that you see of any Spanish stuff is absolutely caked in it. It really is. And um, it's like what you see with German vehicles in Russia, but worse, seemingly. So now we get our pigment of choice and we go over, well, it's still a little bit wet. What I've done is blasted this with the hairdryer and it's kind of 90% dry. I'm not going straight on neat with the, the wet. And then we're going on with the pigment, and now that is binding in to the, to the damper areas. And it will start to bite in with, um, well, sort of lock itself into where the wet enamel is. Then when that's totally dry, you will have this effect. And it's the next step that starts to make this look realistic and ties it all together. So then we get a dry brush that hasn't had anything. This is a brush I just keep for doing this. This hasn't, hasn't had enamels on it, like, neat. I've never dipped it into enamel or thinners or anything like that. I always try and keep it dry. And we just go over now and work back those pigments just into the areas where they're really sort of biting onto the, to the model. And that will start to show a sort of worn, dusted, um, like trodden in, dirty, but sandy effect which is what we want and this wouldn't work with everything you know you would, this wouldn't work with sort of heavy mud but it is quite good for dusty looking vehicles again which you know crop up in sort of normandy and in russia if you in second world war stuff obviously modern vehicles and here in um, spanish vehicles important also to just wipe the pigments off of any areas that would work so tracks for instance the high points of tracks these polished wheels and we can see how it's all just kind of working in there and selling the effect you can then go back over if you wanted to with that uh, enamel wash that initial wash just to kind of add more depth and go for it like that it's they're the sort of principles i would encourage you to sort of find your own way through it and, and come up with some ideas that you like because uh, it is it's, it's it's a really fun thing to do when you get into it here with the tracks we're just going straight in with neat europe earth and that's just to really give them that dustiness again like i said we didn't want them to look rusty we just wanted to give them some depth dark sort of brownish color for the depth and we go straight on with this europe earth and that starts to bite into the acrylic paint that we got there. These haven't been um, varnished or anything. I'll just make sure it's all worked in. Started to employ the use of a black disposable glove these days, which is coming very handy, I must admit. No pun intended. And it's it helps with just keeping everything clean. Something I never did, but you get stuff all over your fingers. When you actually got gloves on, you think you just take them off and it's it just keeps everything very clean. Sounds like a stupid thing to mention, but if you haven't used gloves before, they are useful, especially for painting. So uh, once this is all sort of worked in, you get this effect, which is already starting to look pretty good. Then we get that dry brush again, 
and we just go back over just to get the sort of uh, not attached real dustiness off and you can see the difference there now it's worked in up against where the uh, sort of contact plate is and it, it all these things take it from being I've chucked dust on to oh I've actually done a little bit more than that and then we try and refine it and go down and down and down and down there using layers till we get to the point that we want to do. You can spend six months on a model like this or you can try and do all of this in a couple of evenings that I did um, trying to sort of lean on some techniques you've learnt and hoping for the best. It would certainly look better if you spend six months on it doing every little fine detail but that's not my personal choice for modelling. Uh, again, now... Trying not to forget insides and outsides of doors. So we're just working on the sort of dust again, where it would get kicked as you go in through the door or you'd scuff it with your dusty clothes or whatever, you'd get caught. You can imagine what these things look like in war. People, I'm not sure people worry too much about keeping things clean and tidy, especially Russian tractors in the Spanish Civil War. But you can see everything that's now is tying together and that's one of the important things you want to look for is to try and make sure everything looks like it's gone through the same story, the same area. It's it's It all ties together rather than having like this right hand track which I haven't done. Um, I usually do one so I understand and then film it and then sort myself out on the other one either on or off camera. Um, it all tends to come together. You can see the base here as well. This was made a long time ago. Um, it wasn't filmed again. It's simply a piece of foam cut to a shape with balsa wood sides glued on. They were painted black. The top is just a little bit of groundwork from ammo. Simple out the pot stuff. Sprayed up different colours. And then at the end I go back over and paint this um, side black again. Now we're going to do the dusting technique which is as old as the hills, I remember looking at Tamiya model magazines from very early 2000s, and if not only if if it wasn't the year 2000, and um, this was being employed in there at that point. It's a very old technique. This is Tamiya buff, extremely thin down to about 90%, and you just work it on. I'm going to leave this here so you can see it build up in real time, so you see what we got now, and then what we got at the end. And this is one of those sort of magic things that just ties everything together. Now we're into the final stages and this is dry step. Uh, it's very sim easy to go over the top here. Dry step's one of the best tools you can have in your arsenal from the ammo product range. It's just that classic right colour. It just works for everything. And I'm just putting on a few splashes here. Now again, we're not doing a wet kind of deposit scene, but this again just helps tie everything in, adds a little bit of depth. We're also thinning some of it down as well and running it in next to any of these high points on the tracks. Going really thin, letting it build up and then as it dries back we get a bit of a deposit. You can see some of the flecks here across the tracks, some of which I work back a little bit with uh, neat thinners, some I don't, all up the sides there as well. Um, and uh, we tone it down which you'll now see in the coming photos which I'm, um, I'm really proud of this one. I, I like it. I don't think it's like necessarily my best work per se, but it's, it's along the journey. It's getting me to where I'm hoping I can be. And I'm, hopefully there's some techniques here that you can um, use for yourself. And it's really nice to have a, a piece like this in my collection for the Spanish Civil War. And this will be on the table for our IPMS SIG at Scale Model World in Telford in November. So if you are 
finding yourself at that event, do come across the to the uh, Spanish Civil War table, which is where I'll be. I run that SIG. This will be there, along with uh, a video that's coming soon as well. So we've got another Spanish Civil War subject. And um, there we are. Hopefully that's something a little bit different on YouTube. I don't imagine you're getting many Spanish Civil War armour subjects. So on that note, if you'd like to keep in touch with everything that I'm putting up, do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. Do consider giving the video a like if uh, you've liked what you see. And I'll see you in the next video.